Good morning. Uh, welcome to episode 29 of the Grace Shepherd's Memo. I'm Pastor David. Um, today I just want to share with you um, two more principles of youth ministry. And, and once again, this is for your encouragement, for your edification, for your real partnership in ministry um, with us, um, the, those of us that are serving in youth ministry. We see you as, as part of the same church. This is all the same mission that we're all on. Um, and this also um, enables you, I believe, to, to better pray for us and encourage us. So um, let's just share two more uh, principles of ministry. Last week, if you remember, I shared why youth ministry exists. Youth ministry exists not for the fun and the games and the distraction of it. Youth ministry exists so that you know we can make disciples. A youth ministry exists because the Great Commission exists. That's what we do what we do, and we take it very seriously. Um, today, I want to talk to you about um, a second principle I have in youth ministry. Um, in youth ministry, getting the gospel right is of primary importance. This is this is what we do, and this is how we we see ourselves as aligning, uh, you know, step in step with Grace Church, because uh, Grace Church's purpose is to to follow kind of the Colossians one twenty eight mandate, which says, "Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom." that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is what the gospel is. We proclaim him. We don't proclaim ourselves. Uh, we proclaim that Jesus lived and died to save sinners um, and to gather them as citizens in his kingdom for the glory of God. Um, we proclaim him by also proclaiming our just condemnation, right? We do not deserve to be saved or citizens in Christ's kingdom. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We proclaim him, though. We proclaim his um, death and resurrection, his substitutionary atonement, that he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that he, he by his wounds, we have been healed, as 1 Peter 2, 24 says. And, and similarly, we proclaim him, and in and, and proclaiming him, we also proclaim the message he proclaimed, which was, um, exclusive faith and repentance in his name alone. Acts 4.12 talks about this when it says, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven among men uh, by which we must be saved. Uh, John 14.6 says something very similar to this. I am the way, Jesus says, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. We proclaim the gospel that Jesus proclaimed, the exclusive gospel, the call to faith and repentance that Jesus proclaimed as well. And we also call and proclaim students to the genuine fruits of believing this gospel message. We don't want anyone to be deceived about what it means to be a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 says, uh, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. These are the fruits of salvation. Uh, Romans six eighteen says, uh, we have been set free from sin and we have become now slaves of righteousness. Titus two fourteen says, he, Christ Jesus, gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people of his own possession who are zealous for good works. This is the gospel that we proclaim. Uh, and, and we want to proclaim it the way Christ himself did. Now, a, a third principle of youth ministry that, that I have is a youth ministry is a discipleship ministry. This is very um, similar to point one, but, but just because it's so significant, I, I want to make a point of the relational um, an intentional aspect of youth ministry. In youth ministry, we are seeking um, relationships that are intentional, spiritually intentional to help other people follow Christ better. Uh, in youth ministry, we teach because that is what being a disciple means. It means you receive teaching. In youth ministry, we try to set students in positive relationships that will help them in their spiritual growth as a follower of Christ. Uh, this is the environment we set. We, we seek, as, as Paul would say, to be imitators of Christ who call other people to imitate us as we imitate Christ. Paul was never about, and neither are we, uh, never about making disciples of himself. We are seeking to make disciples of Christ 
as Christ's representatives here on earth, as we speak his word, as we model his word on display. That is what we are about. We are about um, proclaiming the gospel clearly um, and, and proclaiming it the way Christ did. And, and also we, we are about making disciples as Christ called us to do. Um, these are two more principles of youth ministry. I hope you'll join us again um, next week. A few more of my favorites coming up. Um, but until then, um, farewell. Welcome to episode, uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> Hello, welcome to episode 29 of the Grace Shepherd's Memo. I, of course, am your host, uh, pastor, and doctor, David Babylon. So, what do you want now? Do not adjust your dial. We are in control now. Welcome to episode 29 of the... <laughs> Well, then you know how it goes. Welcome to what? Episode twenty nine. Episode twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh no.